My brother Art. King Arthur, see that door? I'm going to try not to shake too bad because I'm holding my uh, pocket typewriter with my hands. See that door, Art? Yeah, I don't think you should be afraid of that door, but be aware of it. Hang on. Reason being, Art, I'm going to take you out to the shed and give you a schooling, boy. Yeah, you're going to be a schooling, boy. I'll show you why we're going to the shed. Wait, wait, wait. My barn. I'll show you in a second. Hang on. Pause you. First start, let's talk about my uh, my barn door latch. It kept swinging closed, like right now, see? So, mister, let me put my foot on it. We have an over-center block of wood with rope attached. When I rotate it down, the rope goes slack dropping that spark plug tool onto the soil keeps it closed keeps it open I mean you want to see the other door hang on Art no Art on that door I can't have that latch I can't have that pin falling down when the door is closed because I'll never get into my barn again that door opens first this side I want it to stay closed when the shed is locked. So I have drilled a hole in the ground for that old uh, junk ratchet to drop into the hole. And this time I didn't use an over center latch, I just used a pull rope like that. Let go of the pull rope, joggle the door, and it's latched. And again, just like with the other door, pull the latch, pull the rope, the latch rope, and drop it down. The ratchet drops into the grass, and thus keeping the door open. Now, Brother Art, the reason why we came to the barn. Okay, boy. See that ladder, Art? We got to grab that ladder and go across the yard. Hang on, pause you. All right, man, we're getting there. Don't give up on it yet. We gotta, we gotta make a trip over hill and dale. I can climb over the hills. I'm not climbing over dale. Yeah. <laughs> I guess what I'm doing here is fishing for dislikes and hate comments. People telling me to go kill myself and stuff. The usual, what you'd expect. Okay, we're here at the scene. Hey, Art, pause you, man. In Art, I think it's uh, time to rebrand my 80 meter end fed half wave antenna wire. I'm rebranding it, Art. It's now the Wonder Wire. Art, the reason why we climbed up my ladder here is I want to show you exactly how sketchy this wonder wire is, right? It takes off to the trees at a height of you know, 8 to 20 feet until it gets toward the end. Comes down. I actually used an insulator. That is an electric fence insulator from Tractor Supply wherein you'll get a whole bag of them for know, under 10 bucks. Connection from screwing around, not soldered, just wired on it. Who cares? The wire comes down to a nice feed through panel under my window. No, it gets squished between the vinyl window frame and some foam, which in my case is a swimming pool noodle cut in half. Uh, getting old and out of breath, Art. <clears throat> the reason why we came out here today, though, is to show you the Wonder Wire's counterpoise system and the reason why it's called the Wonder Wire. And that is because it's a wonder it even works. Hang on, let's look at the counterpoise. Okay, I've got three runs of coax coming out of the window and the ground wires do as well. 
I've got three white ground wires, counterpoise wires, and there's a green one in that bundle as well. And the green one is just for my station ground, for electrical ground, whatever. Uh, at the time, I did not have counterpoise wires, so I installed that ground rod just to, just cause. Uh, so one of the counterpoise wires, I have three of them. Each of them is 130 feet long or thereabouts. And the reason why I used, put them down was for 160 meters so that I could use the wonder wire as a, uh, <clears throat> a sloping, I guess it'd be a sloping vertical, right? But, uh, then I wanted to try 160, so I threw these three counterpoise wires down. One heads dead so due south, and it comes over here, and it's uh, it's tucked in along the house here. And when I get to my gate, it goes underground. It goes to that corner post, takes a right, and heads due west. That wire is pretty long. That wire heads almost all the way down to the end of the yard, which is a hundred feet away. Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. There's two counterpoise wires there. What they both go to that corner post. One goes due west. One goes due east and follows that rock line. Again, almost right to the end of the yard. Okay. Those are my east and west wires. Really don't have a south wire other than from that post along the house. That direction's due south. I have one more, so that's uh, one, two, actually two and a half counterpoise wires. Let's look at the last one. Okay, you probably won't be able to see it, but the last one comes down the bundle. Runs along the house to the corner of the house, runs this way. So we did a zigzag. Now it's going to run up the length of the house, which is due north. Okay, hang on, I'm going to pause you. And here we are at the end of the house on the northern end of the yard. The wire goes down along the fence, and that's the end of it. The wire ends there. So those are my three counterpoise wires that had east west and north nothing to the south well that one 30 foot chunk to the south but i've tested my 80 meter and fed half wave with and without the bundle of counterpoise wires connected and as expected it makes no difference i do not need to ground the wonder wire ah uh, except for 17 meters where it gets a little bit reactive and but on harmonically related bands no you don't at least in my installation i don't need a ground so i'm going to stop the video and against all policy of mine i'm gonna have to edit crap video uh check my wallpaper out a nike 2 icbm uh control room uh it's now somebody's living room, lucky bastard. And check this out. Okay. Um, we're going to get shaky for a minute. I'm going to show you a couple things before we get into it. First off, when I set my tripod back down, which I'll take a picture of in a minute, I'll set it down on that cloth. That way, when I slide it around the desk, you won't hear... Here we have my little crib sheet, which she'll understand why in a few minutes, in a minute. My transceiver, I'd call it a tranny, <laughs> but you know what, man, I'm a boomer. In my day, a tranny was a transmission. Boys were boys, girls were girls, and trannies were transmissions. Second off, I debated which pointer to use. Um, I think we're going to go with this one. Okay. And now, now things are going to get a little shaky because I want to get close. See this red wire hanging off my union? The reason is, oh boy, I'm going to pause this and set this down and zoom in on that so I can point something out. Hang on. 
Okay, let's see if I can zoom in. Kind of. Hang on. Okay, I've got to get close to this phone because my tripod blocks the microphone, which you'll see in a few minutes. So when I originally wound this double core on them, this is the 49 to 1 tap right there. And I knew, I already knew I wanted more, um, a wider impedance ratio um, range. So when I first wound it, I added a 64 to 1 tap right there and when I and going from the 49 to 1 tap to the 64 to 1 tap would drop my SWR on 80 meters significantly but I wanted another tap because what I like to do is see my SWR bracketed on each side by one tap too low and one tap too high in Z ratio. So what I did was I took a piece of I guess it's 18 gauge hookup wire right there and I just wound it around through the core uh, three more times, two more times, whatever. It's now that tap is 80 uh, what is it, 83 to 1? 81 to 1? Um, I didn't write it down anyway. When I went from the 64 to 1 tap to that one, to the 81 to 1 tap, that's what it is. My SWR dropped to almost nothing. Um, so, I was having a discussion with somebody a while back about why bother building a multi-tap on a when the 49 to 1 tap will cover every band. Yeah, that's only true if you do some trickery with your wire by adding inductance in the wire. I don't want that. I want a piece of junk wire for my antenna for emergency purposes. That's why I'm doing this. So, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to zoom in on my laptop screen. Hang on. When YouTubers make videos and they need to include screenshots from their computer, they do so digitally with software. I'm not a YouTuber. <laughs> I'm just a ham. I am Wirehead. I'm Wirehead. The nickname given to me by my old friend, my CBR friend, Greg. Rest in peace, Greg. Anyway. I have to look at the screen, not my phone. It's really tempting to look at the little tiny phone screen. So, I have, that's, those are the pictures I'm going to show you. That's the first one. You can see the title, the file name right there, but which you would still see if I make it full screen. But I want to make it, uh, that's not full screen, it's full window. I'm going to make it full screen. Okay. That is where, this is where I'm starting. 17 meters QRO. <laughs> Boy, it feels like I'm, uh, I'm going to tilt you down a little. That's better. So this is 17 meters with that 80, 80 meter half wave and fed wire. This is QRO using 100 watts. It looks like it only radiates to the west. My antenna wire, let me start here, it goes in this direction. It almost goes due west, just a little south of west like this. That's the direction. My shack window's here. It slopes up to the tree, then drops down like that. 
So it pretty much looks like it only radiates to the west in the direction that the wire goes toward the high end. That's 17 meters QRO. This, this is 17 meters QRP. Let me zoom in on that a little. So, 17 meters QRP. When I say QRP, I mean 5 watts. All these demos are using 5 watts. That's not bad. So look at the difference. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Yikes. Hang on. Got lost. So, 17 meters QRO, 17 meters QRP. Okay. Um, it looks like nothing is being radiated in any other direction, but just yesterday I uh, made contact using QRP on what was what sounded like a dead 17 meter band. I called CQ one time and got an answer from uh, a fellow in the Cayman Islands. So, and he was pounding in here, by the way. He was 599, and I got a 579 on a signal report out of him. So, does it radiate in other directions other than the west? Yes. These RBN hits, yeah, you got to take them uh, with a grain of salt. They're accurate, but they're not showing the whole picture. You're radiating in all directions, always, with every antenna. <laughs> you really are. Most of your energy may go in one direction, or it may go straight up. But I've played with QRP for 40 years plus, and I know... Uh, you're going to make contacts. I don't care what antenna or where the ham is when the conditions are right. Uh, <laughs> okay, so enough said about 17 meters. Let's look at 40 meter QRP. Make it full screen again. That's 40 meter QRP. And so using that wire on 40 meters, now then it looks like it's more omnidirectional, which I'm sure it is. On 17 meters, I'm sure I've got some crazy lobes on that wire. Um, some of it uh, is high enough that I'll get crazy lobes. But anyway, on 40 meters QRP, I'm getting great coverage. And I'll show you the signal reports now. It's not like... It's not like they're 4 and 5 dB signal reports. You can see... the. 22 dB to a W1, you know, 13 dB. That 13 dB is to K's, KO7SS RBN skimmer. And I'll show you where he is later. You know, but to the East Coast, 19 dB, 25 dB, 31 dB, 26 dB. So, uh, another, uh, N7, 17 dB, a W4 down south, 28 dB. So, um, 40 meters QRP. It's not like those are terribly, uh, terrible signal reports. They're not, or signal reports, RBN hits, they're not. For reference, here's an RBN map of my 40 meter dipole. So, and it's basically the same. It looks the exact same, the dipole one here does, as the, the QRP one on the MFED. Not much difference, which surprised me. Next, we'll look at 80 meters. Oh, boy. <laughs> I got to see the title. Yeah, 80 meters QRO. This is the first map. You know, yeah, I'm using 100 watts here, but I'm also using an antenna that's, uh, most of it is between 8 and maybe 20 feet off the ground. Then it takes off toward the tree limb. You know, 80 meters on a relatively, well, not relatively, on a very, very low end fed half wave with 5 watts. Oh, no, I'm sorry, with 100 watts. But surprisingly, I made contact or I was heard. Um, by a, a TF4 and another ham, another <laughs> another station. Um, there, here's another. Uh, this is 80 meters QRO, 100 watts 
another uh, map. So when I do these screenshots of these RBN hits, I'm obviously doing so when the conditions are good and favorable. I'm not going to bother doing this when they're miserable, right? But this is another map of the U.S. on that antenna on 80 meters using 100 watts. Here's the signal reports. I've got two pages of them because I've got two maps. Once again, it's not like these are miserable signal reports. Again, to the east coast, over 30 dB. Uh, you know, 30 dB, 31 dB for a W1 and a KM3. And so and, and so it goes, 33 dB in the south. Uh, here's the other map, uh, the other list. Oh, and there's a reason why I wanted to show this. Again, you know, more uh, RBN hits in the 30s. But what I wanted to show is this, the TF4. It's not like he was reporting in at 4 or 5 dB. On 80 meters for that antenna all the way to TF4, 17 dB is not bad at all. So here we'll look at the 80 meter QRP map. Again, surprisingly, the same using 5 watts. Um, and again, doing so when the conditions were favorable. And when they are, I live in a relatively quiet RF environment. I'm lucky. Um, on 80 meters, on a good night, I'll have a signal, a uh, noise level of S1 uh, or less. Um, it's shocking. Anyway, 80 meters QRP map 1. Here's another map showing the TF4. It's amazing. I couldn't believe it. And so here's some signal reports using QRP and we'll see what that TF4 reports using 5 watts. Uh, not bad. S uh, signal to noise ratios of less. No 30 dB signal report, signal to noise ratios here, but what we do have are those in the 20s, in the high teens. Um, and again, the TF4 at 10 dB on 80 meters using 5 watts with an ultra low, <laughs> to be honest, an ultra low antenna. So, um, okay, now let's, out of curiosity, and that's using that double core on a, my double core union using a doubled FT140 43 core, three turn primary, blah, blah. This is 160 meters QRO. Now then, we're using the antenna as a, um, a sloping vertical. You have to consider it that. But I'm calling it my wonder wire antenna because it's a wonder it works with three uh, counterpoise wires laying on the surface of the ground. On 160, that's a monster compromise, or so I thought. On uh, 80, it's a non-issue. Ground loss is not an issue on 80. There's basically none. Um, so this is 160 QRO at 100 watts. This is 160. I'm going to have to zoom out if I can. That's 160 QRP. Uh, I'll, t I'll take it. But again, these RBN hits are to be taken with a grain of salt. And I'll show you why. These, uh, um, these are, the next two pictures are maps. And I like to use them as desktop wallpaper. Okay. Um, that one, I'm going to make him full screen again. Those are the states I've worked on 80 using, um, QRP. Um, a couple of them though, um, Iowa and Washington state, um, they were done so using QRO, uh, I have not yet contacted those two states using QRP on 80. But what I have is contacted California and Alaska on 80 meters using 5 watts. And they've confirmed the, the QSO on Log of the World, Logbook of the World. So, um, yeah, 80 meters. 
Um, the RBN hits, uh, yeah, I guess they're accurate. And again, my antenna wire starts at my home and runs this way. So, I think th it looks like it's radiating in these two directions, but I think what's happening more than that, since it's so low, I think this is basically my footprint for the first bounce. And this is my footprint for the second bounce down. I have a feeling that's what's happening. I have a feeling that primarily the wire, the wonder wire, is an NVIS radiator primarily. But like I said, I don't care how much or little power you radiate, you're going to make contacts, even on 80 using QRP with Alaska. And not just uh, with Alaska, I've contacted all these countries on 80 meters with 5 watts using that antenna. Let me, uh, that's, you can barely see those. It's so dark. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Here's the list. Those were worked mostly in an 80 meter contest. But I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Boy, things got dark. Rats. Uh, anyway, that's fine. 80 meters. There we go. Um, next picture, and the last, is a 160 meter map of the U.S. Those are the states I've contacted on 160 meters using that wire and those three counterpoise radios, if you will, laying on the surface of the ground. My ground is incredibly wet. Almost year-round it's damp. And I don't know if that's a help or a hindrance. Uh, radi uh, elevated radios are far better, uh, far less lossy than buried ones. So I have a feeling my semi-buried ones are somewhere in between, right? So, anyway. Um, oh, all these states here are from one contest, the CQ 160 meter CW contest. That's crazy, on 160 with my 80 meter N-fed half-wave wonder wire antenna. So that's it. Say goodbye to the silo. Hopefully Art and anybody else, like I said, unfortunate enough. Oh, that's why my screen went dark. My camera was screwed by the Somehow I turned on my light. Anyway, Art, anybody else unfortunate enough to stumble across this? So, <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, hopefully you got some use out of it. 73 old men, old men, and young ladies. <laughs> we wish, right?